In the next few videos, we will talk about creating, applying and adjusting gradients in Illustrator. And we will do that while learning about the Gradients tool and the Gradient Mesh tool. Gradients are one of those effects that are most used and loved, not just by especially fresh designers, but also by a lot of designers' clients. I guess it's because they can create that instant wow effect, but sadly, gradients tend to be overused. There's a thin line between just enough amount of gradients and too much gradients. So using them is not just about the tools, but also about the design principles. So in the next videos, we will focus on the gradient tools rather than gradients themselves. So let's start doing that with the gradient tool. The gradient tool sits right here in the tools panel and has a default shortcut, which is the letter G, naturally. So how does this tool work? Now, first of all, to add a gradient fill to an object, we can either click this little box right here, we could also press the period key, or we can simply go to the gradient panel and click on this gradient box. By the way, if you don't have the gradient panel up, you can make it active by going to the window menu, gradient, or you could use the control command plus F9 shortcut. Notice that when you select a gradient filled object and select the gradient tool, a gradient annotator appears in the object and by default its size matches the size of the object. You can use it to modify the gradient pretty much the same way as you would using the gradient panel. If you position the tool directly over the gradient annotator, it becomes a slider, same as in the gradient panel, and it has gradient stops and location indicators. You can click the gradient annotator to add new gradient stops just like so. Double click individual gradient stops to specify new colors and opacity settings. Or you can drag gradient stops to new locations. Notice that all the changes we apply to the gradient annotator are taking effect instantly. When you position the pointer over the gradient annotator's end, Two things can happen. You can see either a rotation cursor or an arrow. When the rotation cursor appears, you can click and drag to reposition the angle of the gradient. And when an arrow appears, you can click and drag to decrease or increase the range of the gradient. Also, dragging the circular end of the gradient slider repositions the origin of the gradient. If you don't want the gradient annotator to block your view of the gradient, you can hide it by going to the view menu, hide gradient annotator, or view, show gradient annotator if you want to bring it back up. So we already have the basic understanding of how the gradient tool works. In the next video, we will take a look at how the gradients work in conjunction with the swatches panel.